Welcome to Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. Redeeming the Time is a series of purpose-filled insights for you to redeem God's time with fresh revelation from the Lord. Stay tuned for today's message. Isn't it fun to learn how to pray when you get answers? Someone was asking me the other day, and they said, well, what do you do? And I, you know, there's so many aspects of Anna's Gate, and and I said, I was asking the Holy Spirit, what shall I tell him? And he was, it was a guy that was working on my car, and I said, well, I teach people how to pray so that they get results. He said, oh, well, I need that. <laughs> I said, you know, when we align with heaven, and we learn how to agree with heaven, we get results. I said, just because things just kind of seem to make sense with your mind, you don't have to agree with it. And he was, he was checking my car, and, um, and I said, example, I said, look at my tires. He looked at my tires, and I said, they look pretty good, don't they? He goes, yeah, yeah, those are nice tires. I said, I bought those in 2010. He goes, really? I said, I have over 250,000 miles on my car. I said, I run all over the place. I said, but I bless my tires. I said, if the Israelites, or the Hebrews, their shoes did not wear out, um, you know, while they were 40 years in the desert walking, I said, these are the shoes of my car, and they don't run out. They don't wear out. He goes, oh, I like that. <laughs> so, you know, just because in your mind you think, oh, well, you've got so many miles, you need to have new tires. No, I bless my tires. I bless my transmission. I bless my engine. I bless my windshield wipers. I bless my seats. I, <laughs> you know, you just bless. Blessing is greater than the curse. And God gives us strategies. Now, we need to be wise. You know, I make sure that my oil is changed and I take care of my car because I want to be a good steward of what he's given me. But you don't have to make your decisions out of your soul. You can bring, make your decisions out of your spirit. And God has given us strategies that work. Say that works. works. Strategies that works. I mean, if you're going to do something, don't you want it to work? <laughs> I do. I want strategies that work. And if, if we're praying about something and it's not seeming to come in line, it isn't God that's off base. <laughs> you know, we, we find out, okay, Lord, what do we need to do? I have a friend that when she comes down to visit me, she likes to help me prune my bushes. Well... That's fun for her. That is not fun for me. If you ever want to be a blessing to me, just come over and, and work in my yard. But um, anyway, one day she decided it, it was, happened to be pruning time. So she's going to prune everything. She didn't realize or think about that I'm from the desert, the Mojave Desert, where if something grows and it has a flower on it, it's really precious. <laughs> and she was pruning and she was chopping things that had flowers still on it. I walked out and I went, ah! And she goes, Carol Marie, but this is the time to prune it. I said, but there's a flower on it. I said, do not touch it if there's a flower. She said, but it's the time. She said, if you want more flowers, later you need to prune it when it's time to prune. And so... Um, I didn't like those words, um, but I did try to adapt to them. So what I want to teach you, you, the paper that you have right now, we have just entered into the second month on the Hebrew calendar, or it's really God's calendar. He's the one that put the sun into place, the moon into place, the stars in the sky. He's the one that did that. He's the one that named the the, the months. And each month has a wonderful anointing. And if we learn to adapt and align to the anointings, we're going to get more flowers on our bush. We're going to get more fruit on our tree. Because it's time. See, if you align with the times, you're going to get more results. And the more strategies that we get, 
so that we can align, the better it is. Now, we just finished the Feast of Passover. Now, between Passover and the Feast of Pentecost, there's a 50-day span, okay? And so, in the very first month is Passover. God's the one that said that. He said, I want this to be the first month because of Passover. You passed out of death, and, 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 and I brought you out of bondage into a freedom. And so on the third month, then we have Pentecost. And it's the Feast of Pentecost, and that's when God gave the Torah, the Word of God, to Moses. See, we just think Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit came, um, you know, in the book of Acts. And, but it, and he did come at that time. It was at the, the, uh, during the Feast of Pentecost. You know, he does everything at, a point in, uh, at appointed times. Yeah. I mean, he's just good about that. Everything is planned at an appointed time, okay? Mm -hmm. So, between the first month and the third month is what? The second month. Come on, you guys. Let me try that again. Between the first month and the third month is? The second month. Woohoo! Okay, the second month is a month of connecting. Is that good? Because we're, it is the linking between the first month and the third month. It's a linking between Pentecost and Passover. Okay? Passover being first and Pentecost being the third on the third month. So we've got this middle month. Now have you heard of the counting of the Omer? Yeah. And so it's the counting of the Omer, which is the counting of those fifty days between those two feasts. Alright? Omer can be translated utterance. Mm. It's a time of declaring. It's a time of decreeing. It was a time of expectation. What happened was, during this time, when as they were uh, going, each day they were closer to the time where they knew God was going to give the Torah, was going to give the Word of God. So it was like, oh, we're one day closer. We're next day. We're one more day closer. There was such expectancy mm -hmm. because they were getting closer. They knew God was going to speak to them. They had a special assignment with God. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. There was an excitement. Okay? Now, during the same time, we've got... You know, excitement that was going on with the disciples and the 120 that were gathered for the Holy Spirit to come. And we're going to be studying that in a little bit more detail in our next session. So this is the month of Nisan. I mean, not Nisan. The first month was the month of Nisan, and now the second month is the month of Lar. And so, and then we're in month, the second month is a connecting month. Okay? So it's a time of connecting. Say connecting. connecting. And and say, I am a connector. I am a connector. And I because I partner with God. Because I partner with God. So here we are. We're in the month of Lar. And the example is Obadiah's widow. Now when you read um, 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 through 7, you don't read that it's Obadiah's widow. No, but I'm like Paul Harvey. I'm giving you the rest of the story. And according to history, the Obadiah's widow was the one with her sons in 2 Kings 4 that were going to be taken into slavery. And so she's crying out to Elisha for an answer. And the reason why I chose her as our example for this month is because Obadiah was from the tribe of Issachar. And the tribe of Issachar is the tribe for this month, okay, that we're going to look at it. So we've already talked about that this is a month of, of appointed times would be the counting of the Omar. And uh, it's that in between time. It's also a time of Hasid, which is a time of giving uh, acts of kindness. It's time to do benevolence. Now, I think every day is a time of doing benevolence, don't you? So, but this month, there's a special anointing on it. So just like... Um, we can always learn from Obadiah's widow, but this month there's some special truths that you can tap into. 
And so this month, is a, there's times of, of uh, doing acts of kindness that God is going to breathe on in such a way. Mm-hmm. And earlier we were talking about that a uh, uh, pro- prophetic word the Lord gave concerning finances and he, uh, about this time that we're living in now. And he said that those that get into the stream of benevolence mm-hmm. will not only survive but thrive the uh, financial pressures ahead. So this is a time to kick it into gear, guys. There's an anointing to do benevolence. And it's the second month. And so two means not only separation, you know, they were separated from bondage, right? Um, But it's also division or contrast, but it also means connection, testimony. The living word, there were two tablets. Of the, of the commandments. Um, we have the New Testament and the Old Testament. Uh, two represents. Um, also, it can mean war, ruin, or death. So, you, you want to tap into the generational blessings, but you also be on your guard. Don't be surprised when you're doing acts of kindness that not everybody is in the same flow with you. <laughs> You know, sometimes there's a time of division. Sometimes there's a time of, of war. We're seeing war mm-hmm. all over the world. So it's a time for us to hold fast and be strong in the Lord and tap into Him. Let's give Him praise. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If we know when it's time to plant and when it's time to harvest, you know, and when it's time to prune, you know, and don't get them confused. You know, if you had your fruit tree full of fruit, that would not be the time to prune. No. You know, you'd lose all your fruit. You wait till it gets ripe and it's ready, right? You know, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. If you understand that, then you don't fall apart. You know, winter time. Look at that. You look at the tree, it looks dead. All the leaves are off of it. It just looks dead. And we think, there's nothing even happening. (laughs) But there is something happening. Mm -hmm. The roots are going deeper. The roots are going deeper. There's a lot going on that you don't see. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in our lives. You know? So, as you understand the anointings on each month, then it helps us align with it so that we're not getting frustrated. Also, if you understand what's going on, you know, now I should, since I use this example a lot, it might be good for me to understand gardening. <laughs> but, <laughs> now, when do, when do you put the manure and all that stuff on? Huh? When do you do it? What, what season? What do you do in the spring, too? You don't, see, you can do it in the fall and the spring. How about that? Okay. So, you know, there, there are special things that you do at different times, and you may not see the results right then, huh? You might not see it until when the harvest comes. Okay, then you back up a little bit more, and you go, okay, I'm wanting to plant a garden. I want to plant a tree. And, but the soil is all rocky, and it's full of weeds and all that. So there's some stuff, I realize this part, you have to do ahead of time. you got to take the rocks out. You've got you to gotta get the weeds out. You've got to get it ready. I remember we had a grandpa that we had adopted, Pop Self. And he was precious. And he turned our whole backyard in the desert into a garden. Wow. And he, I mean, he spent... Months, months preparing the soil. He was, he was 95. He lied about his age and said he was 92 because he didn't want us to think he was old. I think I would have backed it up further if I was going to lie about it. So he worked on that soil. I mean, he put bags and bags and bags of manure, and he got the rocks out, and he got the weeds out. And I mean, I'm thinking, hurry up, come on, I'm ready for homegrown tomatoes. But no, he's working the soil, he's getting it ready. And I mean, his, his vegetables, we're talking being in the Mojave Desert, that when 
his squash came up. I mean, he put it in the, the county fair. It was so big. I'm going like this. It wasn't that big, but it was big. <laughs> and, I mean, he, and it, why? The same people could plant the same seeds, but the soil was made ready. Okay, so as we're looking at this month, we've just entered into this month, you guys. The first month helped prepare us for this month. Okay? Nissan helped prepare us for this month. All right? So let's look at some of the anointings that are connected to this month. All right? So it's a month that we need to really war over our soul. We need to be, be uh, uh, mindful of it. This is a month that deals with our mind, will, and emotions. It's a time that things could look hopeless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, if you, if you, all right, think about that winter time with the tree. It looks like it's dead, but there's a lot going on under the soil. Okay? So, don't let your heart be troubled. This is a month that it could look hopeless. And anxiety can try to grab your heart. Fear can try to grab your heart concerning your finances, concerning your family, concerning your situation. And you're thinking, what else is going to happen? And you almost get the attitude like, oh, when is the other shoe going to drop? No, don't get, don't get talking that way. Mm -hmm. We have shoes of blessing. If you want a shoe, another shoe to drop, let's have it drop a blessing, not of a problem. Amen. Okay? What happens is we pick up the fear, we pick up the anxiety, and then what happens is we start expecting one more thing. What else? You know, Murphy's Law. If it, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me. No, if it's going to, if it's good, it's going to happen to me. Right. You know, you start believing for the best and just think, okay, there's a lot going on because I have covenant with God. There's a lot going on that I can't see and I'm going to trust him. This is when faith has to kick in, you guys. Just because you don't see it all happening doesn't mean it's not happening. It's a time to instead connect and link with heaven. See, what happens is when we have our mind on the things that we can see here, it's much easier to look for that paycheck that comes in every month at a certain time or every week or however you're used to. And then all of a sudden if it's not there, <laughs> oh my goodness, you're going... You know, wait, ha, and fear wants to grip you. But this is the time where you get to know God as your source, as you get to know Him as your provider. This is a time you choose to link with heaven. Remember, it's a connecting month. It's a linking month. This is a time to connect with heaven. Okay, it's a choose, a time to choose with your will to cry out as Obadiah's widow did. Okay, now... The scriptures do not tell us this, but you have to do research, and thanks to me, I did the research for you, so you don't have to do it, but according to JewishEncyclopedia.com and some other resources of history, Obadiah had borrowed money from King Ahab's son, okay, at to, in order to feed the hundred prophets of the Lord. Remember, he had hidden 50 in one cave and 50 into another cave and so that Jezebel wouldn't murder them. And so he was feeding them. And so what happened is he borrowed money to keep that food, food going. Okay. So now, I, and I haven't found out how he died, but she's a widow. And there's this debt that is owed to the government. Some of you may have... That in your story, you know? But God has a plan. And so, she does not name drop here. She does, And she's not mad at God. Because he was doing God's business, and now, not only has she lost her husband, but they're, they're trying to take her sons. Now, according to the law, God's law, Leviticus tells you this, that children could work off a debt. So, she's not asking God to break the law. See, sometimes we're praying amiss, you guys. We're asking God, oh, have mercy on this situation, and we want him to break the law. No, we want a higher standard. Mm -hmm. Don't ask him to break the law. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, she cries out to God for a strategy higher than the law. 
And she says, you know that my husband was a son of, the, of the, one of the prophets. You know, he was a son of the prophets. He was, he was a godly man. She doesn't say, well, look what happened. You know, here he's doing what Jehovah God told him to do, and look what's happened. Now my kids are, first I lose my husband, and now I'm losing my boys, you know. No, she didn't have an attitude. She doesn't fuss about it. She says, you know, he was a godly man. He was one of the sons of the prophet. And what does Obadiah say to her? He says, what would you have me to do? And then he says, and what do you have in your house? And when you go to the original translation, it is, what do you have in your house of value? We're partnering with God. Sometimes we just sit on our backside and we just want God just to drop it in our lap. Come on, guys. I think Christians can be some of the laziest people in the world. We, we partner with God. He says, what do you have in your house? And she says, I have anointing oil. Well, she says, I've got oil. And if you do research on it, you find out that it's the oil that was set aside. It would have been a value for her anointing of her body when she died. Now she has a choice. Is she going to plan for her death or is she going to sow it into life? Woo! <laughs> is she going to sow into life? God gives us the same choice. Are you going to plan for your death and just look forward, oh, it looks hopeless, or are you going to sow it into life? Whoa, I feel God on that. This is a month that we sow into life. That's why it's a month of Hasid. It's a month of benevolence. You sow into life. And she was asked, what do you have of value? And she said, I've got this oil. So he gives her a strategy and he says, okay, get empty vessels. Start pouring into empty vessels and then go and take it and sell it. Pay off your debt and live on the rest. See, she Found empty vessels. Second Timothy 2.20 says that we are vessels. Right? For the master's use. Find vessels you can pour into. The oil represents anointing. All of us have anointing in our life. We pour into other people. And then she took it to the marketplace. And then it went to the government. She paid off her debt to the government. And she had enough to live on the rest. That's giving praise. We may find ourselves in a hopeless situation. It may look hopeless. It may look like, what can I do? Just like Obadiah's widow, she did not have what she needed. You know, all she had was some oil. And she had two boys that legally could be taken to pay off a debt, work it off. And so she's asked, what do you have of value? I ask you this morning, what do you have of value? God wants to partner with us, you guys. What do you have of value? You know, so she just thought, oh, well, I just got some oil, you know. Now, she probably understood that it was a value if it was set aside for her burial. What do you have of value? I say to you, what do you have of value? Let Holy Spirit show you what you have of value. And then start sowing it. Notice, she began to pour into empty vessels, first of all. You know, a lot of times we sit here and we go, oh, you know, when I get a, a, a new job, or when I win the lotto, or when I, you know, whatever, you know, then I'm going to do this. God says, what do you have right now? You start sowing right now. And it was empty vessels. She wasn't empty. <laughs> she wasn't empty. She sowed into empty vessels. You start looking for the empty vessels every day. What happens is we want to, we want to um, ask God to bless our day. We make out our plans, and I'm all for planning. But I want, to, I want his plan. But what happens is we'll make out our plan and we'll say, God bless my plan. And then we get frustrated because the plan doesn't all fall into place together. You know, we'll have the plan and, it'll, and, and then if we have it timed, 
I mean, I used to time it down to the minute. And if we would have it timed and it didn't, and something came into my day that wasn't on my list, oh my goodness, I would have, I would have panic because I had this whole list and I had all these things I had to do. And I'd ask God to bless it. But it wasn't necessarily His plan. <laughs> so what we do is we align with His plan. Okay? And we take the anointing, so we've got to first let Him pour into us. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. her directions from Elisha. He said, he said, borrow empty vessels, not a few. That means a whole bunch, right? And then he said, you, go, you close in and shut the door. You know, she, sometimes we forget to close in with God. We forget to get our, our vessel full, you know. He said, close in, shut the door. Then... Start pouring into the empty vessels. Okay? So let me challenge you. Close in with God. Close in with Him. Let Him stir up the anointing that's within you. Right? And then you start pouring into empty vessels. The very thing that you need, that's what you sow. Right? You sow what you need. If you want carrots in your garden, then don't plant corn. <laughs> Unless you want corn and carrots. I learned that from Pop Self, too. He, and he had them all. He knew exactly where the carrots were, and he knew where the corn was, and the green beans were. And, you know, they were planted at different times. You know, it wasn't just, I would have just want to throw them all up there. Let's see what comes up. <laughs> no, he had them all in rows, exactly what it was supposed to be. So, you sow what you know, if, some, if you're having trouble with your car, bless somebody and sow into their car. If you're, needing, if you're needing help in a certain area, find somebody that excels in that area and be a blessing to them. Learn from them. Sow what you need. Sow what you need. Okay, so this month is a time to cry out just like Obadiah's widow did. It's a time of crying out to God. It's a time, you know, sometimes I, am, I love to worship and I love to pray from his point of view. But you know what? Sometimes we lose sight of the old time on your face crying out to God. Letting him break our heart with what breaks his heart. You know, I love worship and praise, but sometimes there's a time of just crying out. You know, he, Jesus wept over the city. You know, we need to let him break our heart with what breaks his heart. She cried out for an answer. She didn't want her boys to be taken. But her heart was free. She didn't blame God and she didn't, she didn't go into the whole story about Jezebel and all, everything. She cried out for an answer. And, she, and God gave her an answer. And she didn't. And she didn't argue with them. I am so surprised at people that argue. Oh my gosh! And it's usually the thinkers because they're trying to figure it all out. But she didn't argue. You know? Are you kidding me? You want to take my last oil? <laughs> Don't you know? I'm supposed to set that aside and. Keep it for my burial. And you're asking me to give it away, to pour it out. No, give me a different strategy. And yet, it, don't we do that sometimes, you guys? Oh, let's just praise him a minute. Thank you. We are in a time of seeking God for strategies. He wants to give them. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. He wants to give us the strategies. You know, it's a time to cry out and ask Him for strategies. And He wants to give them. <laughs> this is a time to tap into the anointing of the Issachar tribe. Issachar was known for knowing the times and the seasons. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
I mean, and if there ever was a time that we need to know how to align with God with His times and His seasons is now. So this paper, if you look at the very top of your sheet, and we'll have it online as well, April 18th, really it was the 20th when the new moon came up in Israel, and it'll go through May 19th. May 19th is my birthday. Just, just so that you know. <laughs> okay, so this month, the month of Lar, is, is what, what we're in. So as you're praying this month, what I want to challenge you is take these, these things that are on the paper and use it as you're praying. See, see what I'm talking about? You know, it, it's knowing how... That it's a time to plant, or it's a time to prune, or it's a... Okay, so this month is the second month. So, it's a connecting month, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's a time of counting the Omer, of an expectation of His Word. Okay, so expect extra revelation to come to you. Expectancy to rise up in you. It's a time to separate from what is what has been bondage. There's an anointing for separation, you guys. Separation can be a good thing. You know, it seems like, and don't be surprised if you have some struggles in this. Some of the stuff that you might be trying to separate from, like sweets. <laughs> or, you know, I'm trying to bring my body into order. <laughs> and somebody I really care a lot about brings me the best peanut butter cookies in the world. And so I am so thankful for the cookies because it gives me a chance to discipline my body and I'm going to ration it out for a whole month. <laughs> so whatever it is that you are needing, this is a month to tap into it. We have what we need this month, okay? So look at it. The Hebraic letter on the alphabet connected to this month is Vav. And it means connection. It means linking. Isn't that perfect? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's perfect, isn't it? Okay. It is a month. It is a month of repentance and a month of giving. <clears throat> All right, Mount Zion. If you big world map, it's on the lower. Uh, if you cut your map in half, it would be on the lower right bottom corner. And the same thing over here on the map of Israel. So it lets you know what part of Israel we're praying for <clears throat> and what nation. So we're, we're hitting in the nations there. We're talking about, <clears throat> um, we've got Africa, Eastern Africa, Saudi Arabia. Boy, this is a time to pray for Saudi Arabia, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Southern Africa, uh, Mozambique. I've been to Mozambique. Tanzania, okay, Eastern Africa. I mean, this is a whole section there. So there's anointing to pray for that area. Heidi and Roland Baker have a ministry that is based out of Pimba, uh, Mozambique. And they work with, I think, 10,000 orphans, fatherless children. And so <clears throat> it's a good time to pray for the ministries in this area. Uh, Saudi Arabia and this whole, all of that region, all the, the stuff that's being stirred up concerning war against Israel. This is a time to pray. And then we're praying for this lower section here. Look at this. See, it's coming from the hub would be Jerusalem. And then it's moving downwards and out. Look at the bottom part of the Dead Sea. And then into Jordan, and then on out. Okay, so see see that whole section there, um, where we're able to pray for the cities <clears throat> include the Bin Hanan Valley. Is that the right way of saying it? Uh, it's notorious for idolatry and child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Woo! So not only are we praying for Israel, and they accept abortion. It's high, you wouldn't think so in Israel, but there's high percentage of abortion. We need to pray for the unborn babies. We need to pray for the children, okay? Idolatry, um, the religious spirit there. But we need to pray for our nation too. You know, whatever things that we're identifying with. He Hebron was a region and a place where God's covenant with Abraham became concrete. 
It represents fatherhood and friendship. Oh, isn't that good? Because God made himself known as a friend to Abraham. <clears throat> and it's along the southeastern border. So, do you catch that fatherhood and friendship? There's an anointing for fatherhood and friendship. Is that good? Amen. Yeah. We can tap into that, guys. See, you're going to find jewels as you're studying this. And if it bears witness with you, or you're praying for somebody, or looking at something that you need to be able to um, <clears throat> identify with, then you need to be able to look at it and say, okay, there's an anointing here. See, it doesn't mean that you can't pray other months for it, but it's a time that we can tap into it. <clears throat> okay, acts of kindness, this is a time to do acts of kindness. It's a time to, to flow in that. And <clears throat> backing up a little bit on our stone in color, um, <clears throat> it's, it's the lapis or opaque blue. Uh, lapis is a medium to deep blue stone with uh, with um, with py uh, pyrite shimmering parts in it that looks like stars. And blue <clears throat> represents the spirit of might. It represents revelation, heaven, confidence, harmon harmony, and peace. And the silver represents redemption and salvation. Now, with every color, you have a positive and a negative, just like with everything. So then you need to be on your guard, okay? So the negative side to be a, a, to guard against is depression. Remember we said that this is a time that's dealing with our soul area, our mind, will, and emotions. So depression, sorrow, anxiety, isolation, hopelessness, coldness, and betrayal. So <clears throat> those spirits have been sent out, but there's an anointing to tap into. See, if there's... If your spirit man, which is connected to your soul, okay, your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. So if there's extra sensitivity in the area of your soul, okay, your mind, your will, and emotions. So your emotions are more sensitive. Now, if you channel your emotions to connect with your spirit and to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, look at that. You're going to be more sensitive. But if you're not on your guard and realize that you also are going to be sensitive to the wrong spirits if you're not on your guard. Mm -hmm. And that depression, getting your feelings hurt, <laughs> you know, getting overwhelmed, all of those are going to be um, opportunities for you to agree with. But you're not going to agree with it, are you? No. Okay, we're going to agree with the Holy One and His, and let Him lead. So put your hands up. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this month. We thank you for the anointings on this month. And so I align with you. And I thank you that my mind, will, and emotions are connected to you. And I will feel what you would have me to feel. And I will think what you have me to think. I set my will to connect with you. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give you praise. Thank you for watching Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. We'd like to encourage you to visit annasgate.org for more information. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. There is an awakening taking place, and it's exploding around the body of Christ.